uh, you know, so you heard the term project player, uh, that he was going to be a project player. Well, let me tell you something. If that kid's a project player, well, the project got developed quick <laughs> because uh, it, it, it's a successful project. It, 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 it was it's come to fruition immediately, almost because I mean it, it, you see the talent. Yeah, it's undeniable. You know, it, 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 it's just a matter of putting it together uh, for him. Uh, you know, mentally and, and maturing as a young man. He has a four-year-old son. I think that's got a lot to do with uh, his maturation. Uh, because it seems like he's, he's he's matured quickly based on what we heard and the reputation he had coming out versus the guy we're seeing right now. So I think a lot of that is the influence of Ryan Nielsen, the, Saints, the new Saints defensive line coach, who I think kind of took this kid under his wing and, uh, and, and has been coaching him up and giving him not only some advice on the field, but maybe some advice about how to conduct himself off the field as well. And you see it. I mean, I, 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 I did a, an article on him like two weeks ago where I posted the video. I put the video, I intentionally put the video into the article to demonstrate to the readers that if you click on the video and you watched him in the interview, how articulate and how smart he sounded. And, and the first thing that struck me as I watched the video was like, this doesn't sound like the kid that they described on, dra- on, on the night he got drafted. Because when he got drafted, you thought, man, this guy's a malcontent. You know, he's he got all this baggage. You know, it's another junior galette situation type of thing. Mm-hmm. And and then when you see what we've seen in the first two weeks of the preseason, and then you watch that interview, it, it's not the same kid, or it's not the same kid you were led to believe that he was. So, uh, again, <clears throat> and I'll go right back to what I said uh, in the first part of the show. Give the Saints uh, coaching uh, or the, the organization and the, and the scouting department and give these guys credit because you know again they 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 looked at a guy or or they or they had a guy on their radar that we as fans or as analysts or whatever uh, you want to refer to it as we didn't see it but they saw it uh, they saw it they saw it with Kamar right they obviously saw it with Angeloni right and. And it's, and they've seen it with Muhammad, obviously. So uh, they're seeing things that we're not seeing, and that's why they're getting paid to do what they do. And kudos to them because look, it's been long overdue. So well, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say this too, Barry, and I, I appreciate when I when I wrote the article on this guy right after they drafted him. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I've been high on him for a reason, and when I did a little bit more investigating about the so-called suspension uh, and getting kicked off the team, it was as a result of a, a rental car situation that, you know, it was just kind of bizarre, you know, yeah. uh, a booster or somebody rented a car for he and that, that other uh, teammate on defense. And <sighs> some guys you would say, yeah, I understand why they will label a person a headache, but to say a guy just because he rent, you know, had a rental car s- situation and uh, it looked like a, some impropriety with a, a booster here or there that he's a problem, guys. You know, hey, Chris Sims came out last week, former University of Texas Longhorn quarterback, son of Phil Sims. He said it, yeah. I took money. <laughs> and if we think <laughs> that these young men who are expected to play, not really play, but uh, to expected to um, be full-time student athletes mm-hmm. and majority of their life is consumed for months, almost the entire year, being a football player, that money is not being thrown at them, We've got to be sticking our hands in the sand. You know, we can't be that naive that this doesn't and still is not continuing to exist. Either, you know, there are going to be some changes, need to be some changes in this whole situation. Oh, absolutely. When these kids watch millions of dollars come through their programs, 
Man, yeah, and right. I, it, it's the just three, amazing. The three of us are all around the same age. Uh, or if Remy's still there, the four of us are all, are all around the same age. And we, and we and think about it. We've seen this for years, man. The NCAA it, 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 or Division One or whatever they call it now, the FBS or whatever. I uh, BS as far full, as full of BS. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's been a corrupt system for so long. Uh, it's just you know it, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, short of of creating a system where where college athletes actually get paid, and, and there's a stipend system for these guys. Uh, you know, you make it part of their scholarship. You know, make it part make it part of their scholarship. Say, okay, well, you know, if you get a scholarship, part of that money that that goes towards a scholarship is going to be for A, B, and C. You know, for your room and board, for your meals, for you know, amenities, whatever. Uh, you know, so that these guys don't have to go behind, you know, basically go on the down low, so to speak, and and, and because you know, I mean, look, we're. we're 18, 19 years old, 20 years old. Well, we all been there. Look, somebody want to give me a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have a problem with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah, just one of those just things. Be man. honest, you know. And, yeah. and so you're you're expecting 19 and 20, 21 year old guys to to just turn a blind eye, you know, and, and just pretend like it's you know that. I mean, man, when stuff's being thrown at you. And, and I don't want to even get into the details of what's being thrown at them because it's more than money, <laughs> yeah. if you know where I'm going with that. So, you know, that's hard for a 21-year-old young man. Uh, it's just hard. And, and, and to me, it's just it goes back to the system and the, and the old, you know, the old white, let me call it what it is, the old white men, the old institution that's been in power for God knows how many years. Still in charge, still running things, still uh, using the same old archaic and, and antiquated uh, rules that, that have been in, in place since, what, the 1950s or 60s? I mean, the game has evolved. The problem is, is that the game in the sport of football has evolved, and uh, college athletics as a whole hasn't evolved enough. Yeah, yeah they've evolved, but they haven't evolved enough to catch up to the times. Uh, so uh, so you, and, and as, as a result, you had the system that's in place now, and these kids are being, you know, a uh, uh, kid, and you, uh, you alluded to it. A uh, rent a car? Really? Come on. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah again. And that's, that, that's exactly it. And Kyle, you could have 10 shows in a row on this topic, and yeah. uh, it, it, it just, it, we wouldn't even be able to hit the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and and I, I, I have my own feelings on, you know, whether a college athlete should be paid, uh, as compared to a scholarship, uh, you know, and we'll save that for another day. Uh, but like you guys said about Muhammad, let's look at the quote unquote infraction and okay. It was, it was against the NCAA rules, but it's not like, yeah, that's where I think both the NFL and the NCAA, they have to look at the individual infraction instead of just putting blanket penalties or in this in Muhammad's case, a blanket reputation blasting accusation that he's a malcontent because I, and I, I can't help but wonder what college did he come from? Gentlemen, he came from the U the U, yeah. and <laughs> the U, the U has a reputation. So someone hears the, the average person hears, Oh, another kid at the U got in trouble. They immediately vilify him with some of the more, uh, shall we say, colorful uh, stunts that, uh, that that program has pulled over the years. Where, like you said, Kyle and Barry, yeah, it, it's a rental car situation. Was he dumb? Yeah, uh, a yeah. moment of a, a moment of uh, less you, than intelligence, shall we say? But we were all eighteen, nineteen, twenty-year-old kids too. You give me a car, I'm not. I'll say yes, please, and thank you. <laughs> yep. Well, can I jump in as a 21-year-old? Well, hey, how you doing, Brendan? Well, hi. Mr. Boylan, what's hey, going guys. on? <laughs> Joining the old guys. Welcome. Hey. A <laughs> uh, little late. Obviously, I have a lot going on. I got a game to call. Maryland soccer comes to town Friday. My show opens up tomorrow for year two. So my apologies, but I'm here. Uh, when it comes to the NCAA things, you guys said rent a cars. And I thought one of the most interesting things for me this year uh, since I got back to Gardner-Webb doing commentary and such, is being able to meet 
um, the new recruits, for lack of a better term, but not just that, but foreign kids, uh, not just for football, but for soccer and other sports. Yeah. And talking about NCAA rules, violations, what they signed, how difficult it was to come over, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if everyone listening or even everybody on this panel truly understands at this point how much uh, paperwork goes into that that nobody reads. Let's be honest. We, you know, all of us Apple, Apple users at this point, do any of us read that thing we hit accept when we get the new downloads for things? No. I mean, here's the crazy part is that, especially with some of these foreign guys, they could be suspended by the NCAA or kicked out of the university for using a prescribed drug in Germany that's illegal here mm. uh, for NCAA. It's crazy. So in Muhammad's situation, and I'm going to try to give him the benefit of the doubt being a guy who is his age, is sometimes you can accept a rental car from certain people and it'd be fine under NCAA rules. And there's times where you can rent, get a rental car from a donor and that not be okay. But how the heck are, I mean, obviously you got to read the paperwork you sign. But it's crazy. I can give you an example right now is, for example, uh, some of the guys that work uh, for me um, as cameramen or working behind the scenes um, at Gardner Webb are broadcast journalism majors but they're also maybe baseball players and they're doing this in their off season. Now, if I were to go out with my boss, the director of new media here or the athletic director after a game and eat at something as simple as maybe a Chinese buffet after a game, they could not pay for the student athlete that just worked the same events because they're a student athlete, but they could pay for my meal because I'm quote unquote employed by the university. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's something as simple as that that gets so mixed up and you think, well, what's the harm of that? Well, they just worked. They did camera work, not just for me, but for the university. And that's great. But they'd have to pay for their own meal or that's an NCAA violation. So going to Barry's point is you have this, not just this university, but many universities still ran under this 1950s uh, older white gentleman thing. And you go, there's got to be some something here, some change, some ramification to it all. Because at the end of the day, like you guys said, and I think we're all in agreement here, is to label something as simple as accepting a rent-a-car. And I think Bob even said it, the, the reputation of the you. And being able to throw that all under one label is insane because that rent-a-car in CAA violation is the same violation of an example I just used with a uh, school employee paying for a meal for an athlete. And we'd throw that all under the same category for suspension, for possibly getting kicked out of the university. It's insane how strict it is, but at the same time, how broad it is and how we all want to throw it under one word and how that can be so demeaning. <clears throat> it can... Um, you could even call it defamation of, of a person's reputation because of the word choice we use in the language of contracts in the NCAA when something like that happens. Mm -hmm. And I'm with everybody. When you have a sixth round pick and my, my guy, and you can go back on my Twitter if you really want to the day of the draft, I wanted another guy from the U. I wanted the Saints to give Brad Kaya an opportunity. I, I wanted that. Stacey Coley. <laughs> hey, we all wanted certain people. And you go and you look up and you go, who the heck is this kid? And why are we drafting a guy with, with problems and all this stuff? Junior Gallette was just brought up recently, and that was my first thought. I was like, okay, here we go again. But we all have assumptions off that because the way they define something as simple as breaking NCAA rule for a rental car. Right. But here's the thing with me, too, is, is as a commentator, someone employed by the university, if they offered me a car to even drive, myself say i missed the team bus or something crazy happened they said bernie here's a car go drive to the event yourself i couldn't accept that even as an employee of the institution that's that's even getting away from being a student athlete it is so strict and crazy with the ncaa yeah it's just it's something it's something 
Yeah, well, you know, guys, like you said, Bob and Brendan, great points, and Bob, great points. We can talk about this on and on to the break of dawn. And <laughs> the bottom line, you have the NCAA is a.